The PicaDev air quality sensor is a multi-gas sensor that detects volatile organic compounds, things like ethanol, oxidizing gases, and even byproducts of human respiration and metabolism. The sensor is capable of sampling these gases and producing outputs for total volatile organic compounds, equivalent CO2, and air quality index. These metrics are commonly used to monitor indoor air quality and control ventilation systems. I'm going to show you how to get started with the PicaDev air quality sensor and a Microbit V2. We'll connect these together and measure some air quality metrics. But first, a little more about the sensor. The PicaDev air quality sensor features two PicaDev connectors for daisy chaining connections with other PicaDev hardware. There's an address switch labeled ASW. This is used for uniquely addressing a second air quality sensor. Leave the switch in the off position for now. Across the bottom, there's also a breakout header for more experienced makers. To follow along, you'll need a Microbit V2 and the following PicaDev hardware, a air quality sensor, adapter for Microbit, and a PicaDev cable to connect everything together. Plug your Microbit into the adapter and make sure that the buttons are facing up. Connect one end of your cable into the adapter and the other to your air quality sensor. And again, make sure this ASW switch is off. Then connect to your computer with USB. We're going to program our microbit with MicroPython using Thony today. If you've never done that before, check out the article for help getting started. To move along, find the download section in the article and select your dev board, microbit. Right click each of the links and select save link as. So I'll save PicaDev Unified to a PicaDev directory in my documents. And I'll do the same with PicaDev ENS160. Open Thony, navigate to where you saved those two files and connect to your microbit. Then select both files, right click and upload to microbit. There they are. Once that's complete, head back to the article and scroll down to the first example, reading air quality metrics. Copy all of this code with control C and paste into a new script and click the green run button. I'll save this to my micro bit as main.py. All going well, you should see some air quality metrics showing up in the shell. Let's go through them in turn. I'm getting AQI of three, which is moderate. TVOC, about 300 parts per billion. ECO2, which is about 800 parts per million. And the status, which is currently in warm up. AQI is an air quality index that ranges from one excellent to five unhealthy. And we can see that there are recommendations for ventilation and exposure limits. While this is a German standard originally, it is recognized internationally and used in industry. And since the numbers range from one to five, it's very easy to make logical statements from these numbers. For example, if greater than three, then we need to ventilate. Equivalent CO2 is another metric that's used in industry, and it's basically using the multi-gas readings on the chip to create another single reading, the equivalent CO2. It's not measuring CO2 concentration directly, but it's inferring it from the concentration of other gases. And again, we have some brackets with a descriptive rating and some ventilation recommendations. As for TVOC or total volatile organic compounds, this is basically what the chip is measuring. It's a multi-gas sensor, and this is like the output of that sensor. Now let's have a chat about this status. Initially, when I powered on my device, it was warming up and it's now operating okay. Your device may have been reporting that it's in the initial startup phase. The PicaDev air quality sensor has three states, initial startup, warm up, and operating okay. When the sensor first powers on, it will be in this initial startup state, which lasts up to an hour. You can still use your sensor right away in this state, but the accuracy will be improved once the sensor has warmed up. If the sensor is allowed to run continuously for at least 24 hours, it will never need this long initial startup process again. Instead, it will perform a much faster warm up, which only lasts a few minutes. Time for a closer look at the code. At the top of the script, we import the device driver for the onboard ENS160, that's the sensor. We also import a function to create a delay. We call the sensor initialization function, which returns a air quality sensor object, and we assign that to the variable sensor. So anytime we see sensor in this code, we're referring to this physical device. 
Then there's an infinite loop and we submit some queries for the air quality properties. We read sensor.aqi and store that in an AQI variable, sensor.tvoc and sensor.eco2. And then we print all the data. AQI is a tuple of both a value, that's the numerical one to five, and a rating, that's the description that we get in these brackets. So here in the print statement, we have aqi.value and aqi.rating. That can be really useful because now we have a number to use with, say, switch logic, but we also have a description that we can use as a helpful print statement. tvoc is just a value, so we can just print tvoc. And similarly with eco2, we have a dot value and dot rating component of that named tuple. And that's how we can get the numeric value and the description. Let's actually put one of these values to use and make an air quality alarm using the micro bit. We can import the music module. This will allow us to play some pre-made sounds that are already on the micro bit. And I'll remove all of these prints except maybe AQI. Then we can say if AQI.value is greater than three, uh, music.play, I've opened up the micro bit documentation. What music shall we play? Let's go with music.chase. See what that sounds like. Music.play, music.chase. And maybe we'll sleep for three seconds. Run the script. Okay, the AQI is currently three. Now I have here a bottle of cleaning alcohol and if I open this up, this should register as a sudden spike in air quality or a sudden change in air quality. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we transitioned to an AQI of four, which is poor, and we had an alarm. Now that I've moved it away from the bottle of alcohol, the AQI has improved. And now if I slowly bring it closer to the bottle, we should see that happen again. Woo! <laughs> there we go. Now it's possible to have up to two air quality sensors on the same PKDEV bus, and this is how you do it. They are each going to need a unique ASW or address switch setting. For my first sensor, we need the address switch to be off, and for the second sensor, we need the address switch to be on. I'll build that now. Here's my second sensor, and the address switch is on. Now I can copy this example code and paste it into Thony. Now when I run this code, there are two numbers being printed, A and B. These are the TVOC values as sampled from each sensor independently. Here in the print statement, we have TVOC A, which is the first sensor, and TVOC B, which is the second sensor. And if I bring that bottle of alcohol back and bring some of the vapors down, we can see that we can read those two independently. There's a little bit of a difference in the readings and that's probably because one of my sensors would have already been warmed up and the other is only in its initial startup phase. How we can read two sensors independently in code is that there is a separate initialization statement, one for each sensor. Here we have, here we have sensor A being initialized and this time we're passing in the argument ASW equals zero because the address switch is off. And for sensor B, with the address switch on, we have ASW equal to one. Now we have two instances of air quality sensors in our code. Sensor A refers to this device and sensor B refers to the other device. And so we can sample sensor A.tvoc and sensor B.tvoc to get two independent values. And so there you have it, getting started with the PikaDev air quality sensor. We were able to read three separate air quality metrics, and we were even able to remix the example code to create a fun air quality alarm, which could be quite useful. 
And of course, we can read from two devices at the same time. If you make something cool from this starter project or you just have some questions, let us know on our forums. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, happy making.